Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to another fill your freezer, freezer meal prep, freezer stock up, whatever you want to call it. We are going to put a lot of meals into the freezer today and I'm really excited about what I'm about to make. Honestly, my kitchen already smells amazing because I did a few things to get ready for this prep. One thing I did was grill up a bunch of chicken breast I have sitting back here because we have a couple different recipes we're gonna use chicken breast in and you could easily grab rotisserie chickens for this just to cut down on time. Um, but I just decided I like the way that grilled chicken tastes especially in a recipe, it just adds another layer of flavor. So I went ahead and just grilled up a bunch of that. I also made up some brown rice because we have two different recipes that are gonna need rice as well, just to get ahead of the game a little bit. So I'm starting my Dutch oven back here. We're gonna go ahead and cut up an onion and you could use a regular bell pepper. The first thing that we're gonna be making is some white chicken chili. I have honestly not had white chicken chili in a couple of years, and I'm really excited about this. And it's a really simple thing to be able to make into individual serving sizes, and I can just pull them out. I'll show you my freezer containers that I'm gonna be using a little later on. I like to get them in bulk off of Amazon. Um, and then I'm able to divvy out my meals and they're really, the way that the freezer container is shaped makes it simple to pop out your soup or whatever's in there um, and just heat that individual serving up. They're specifically made because they are freezer containers. So I am cutting this up. I'm out of my pre-cut onions in the freezer. I think I'm only gonna need about a half of this onion because it's a pretty nice size. So I'm just gonna chop this up. I have celery over here that is pre-frozen. Um, I like to get that from Azure Standard. Just really convenient. Celery is one of those things that I go through whoo, phases of using. I'm getting a little bit teary-eyed here. Um, and then, like I said, you could use a regular bell pepper, but I love, love, love these baby bell peppers. They are just extra sweet and yummy. Really blinking back the tears. This onion was really strong. So I didn't put any oil in the bottom of my Dutch oven. A little trick, um, if you're either wanting to make a recipe that is lower in fat, or for some reason you just don't have an oil you wanna use in the recipe, if you put onions in the pan first, sometimes, depending on how seasoned your pan is, if you're using a Dutch oven or a cast iron skillet, sometimes the onion can allow for enough of its own oils that you don't really need to use much oil in the bottom of the pan. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I've done this in the past and sometimes I end up adding a little bit, but other times it works out perfectly. The other thing I love about using these baby bell peppers is you can cut them up and you're gonna have multi-colors versus one bell pepper that's just one color. So it helps just bring some festivity to your soup, which is just delicious. So, and the, and the flavor profiles are slightly different in peppers. So it's going to bring extra flavor as well. So I'm doing roughly about a half cup of each of these things, the onion, the bell peppers, and the celery in the bottom of my pan. And then I'm going to be just stir frying those veggies to get them to soften up. While they're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and make the rest of our sauce, or like the sauce part of this soup in the blender because it has a little bit of a secret ingredient. Okay, so we are going to make up our sauce Keep saying sauce it's actually just the base of the soup so we're going to be using some chicken broth and i have gotten a quite a few requests i'm going to grab something to pop this open as i was saying i've gotten quite a few requests to do some more dairy free friendly um recipes i do 
try to give a lot of gluten-free friendly recipes since we have a sensitivity in our household. Not all of the recipes I do are gluten-free. Um, but this particular recipe is actually dairy-free and gluten-free if you make sure you check out all of your um, ingredients. And what I'm doing here, in case you're wondering, is this is homemade chicken broth. And I want it to be um, a little on the lower fat side, so I'm actually taking and scooping out the fat that's sitting on top of the broth because it does separate um, after a while. So just scooping that out. All right, now to our blender, we are going to add two cups of broth. And I do have a measure on the side here so I can see that we're gonna add two cups of broth. This is a really simple recipe, super, super simple. Okay, so we've got two cups of broth in there. Ooh, before I forget though, I do wanna put my handful of celery in here as well. Cause everything's starting to sizzle back here. So, I'm gonna put the celery in there. Okay, so like I was saying, to the two cups of broth in a blender, you're going to add two cans of Great Northern Beans. In total, we are actually gonna have put four cans in this recipe, because obviously chili does have beans in it, but we are going to do a little bit of a hidden ingredient by adding even more of the beans, and it's gonna give it that really creamy consistency that you're looking for from a soup like this, and also from something that you generally would have dairy in it. So this is a good alternative, and even if you do eat dairy, it's just a great way to get extra fiber and a little more health from the bean. I drained and rinsed the beans. So again, this is only two of the cans. And put that in there. Now before we add in our bean mixture and the rest of the ingredients, I'm just going to make sure that these are as tender as I'd like. So we're just gonna keep stirring them and it is working with the onions. I didn't add anything to the bottom of this and they're doing great. Okay, so while our peppers, onions, and celery are getting a little bit more tender back there, I pulled three of the chicken breasts that I grilled up and it is so helpful to really think through, I feel like I say this in every video, but it just is so helpful to really think through the order of how you're going to go about your meal prep because you can save yourself so much time and energy if you know you're going to cook up things for multiple recipes at one time. And so all I did with this chicken is I used a dry rub, I actually used, guess what guys? For those of you that are around a lot, <laughs> you can guess what I used on this. Um, I just used the Buttery Steakhouse seasoning from Kinders and um, just to, used it as a dry rub and then I grilled them all with that on it. It's kind of a good neutral um, and can work in a lot of different recipes as you guys have seen through my videos. We do have a smoker that I can kind of put on a temperature that's more like a grill temperature, not like a long smoke. So the addition of the using the wood pellets to grill these, also I can smell the smoky smell from that and it is just delicious. From here on, it's pretty much a dump and go situation. And this can also be a crock pot meal if you want to make it a crock pot meal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the base of the soup mixture in the bottom, just so that we've got some moisture in here now, <laughs> along with those veggies. To this we're going, I'm gonna grab the beans. So I rinsed and drained um, the other two cans of beans. I wanna get some of my own made, but just hasn't happened yet. Maybe that will be a winter project. To this we are also going to add a um, pint jar, or you could do a can from the store, but a pint jar of diced tomatoes. And then I'm sacrificing this jar of salsa 
We are literally down, I went down into my food storage to get this jar of salsa, which we are coming on salsa season, like quite literally, probably by next week or the following, I can do a batch of salsa. But there is only one more jar besides this jar <laughs> on my shelf down there. So I'm dumping in a pint jar of salsa. That would be about two cups of store-bought salsa. Let's give this all a stir. Now to the veggie mixture, the last thing we're going to add um, when it comes to veggies is two cups of corn. Now I do make my own corn and um, I can it in an Amish method. So I would be using that, but we are quite literally down to the last of that as well. And so we are going to make sure that we can a lot this coming year and I'll be able to use it more often in recipes like this. But for some reason I had this bag of frozen corn <laughs> floating around my freezer anyways and needed to be used up. So here we are. Lastly, we are going to add in our chicken. And oh, I cannot wait to eat this. I am so excited to have this in the freezer and able to grab this for lunches and my husband can grab it for lunches. The girls are gonna love it too. It is going to be a go-to. And I feel like now that I'm making it after a couple years of not making it, it's gonna be a requested <laughs> um, recipe for sure. And a piece just fell on the floor. Our puppy is gonna love that. <laughs> all right, so I didn't know if it was all going to fit in this cast iron. I have one, or I'm sorry, this Dutch oven. I do have one slightly bigger than this. It's just not very pretty after baking sourdough in it quite a few times, but I think that we are good. And this is going to be a very chunky chili, um, which in our household, when it comes to chili, I usually tend to make it on the chunky side for sure. It's just more um, what we prefer instead of being more of a brothy soup. So this is perfect. We're gonna let this simmer and we're gonna add in our spices. All right, so to this, because I know you all love measurements and I'm terrible at just dumping and going when it comes to spices, <laughs> um, we're gonna add a teaspoon of mineral salt or pink Himalayan salt or pink salt or whatever you like to call it. We're gonna add two teaspoons of chili powder, which I think I have almost enough here. I need to go down in my food storage and get up some of my sp big spice jars um, and refill my little ones that are here. And we're going to do the same with the cumin. Two teaspoons of cumin in here. And then we are going to do a teaspoon of each onion powder and garlic powder. And I love these containers. It's kind of a running joke in our house because my husband does not like them. <laughs> I think that they're great for cooking, but he's more of the grilling meat kind of guy in our house. So he would prefer them to be in shakers. So I might need to make an addition of some shakers in our house of just like some of the staples he uses so that he can use them. All right, now, oh my goodness, I need to pull you guys in closer. This just looks so great, especially with the grilled chicken. You can see some of the grill marks on the chicken and it just, oh, looks delicious. Cannot wait to eat a bowl of this. Look at the pops of color in this. We could probably label this um, like a fiesta <laughs> chicken chili because this is beautiful. You got some greens from the celery, you got red from the bell pepper and the tomato and some orange from the bell pepper and yellow from the corn. Got some grill marks on the chicken and you can see some of that seasoning there in it all. Oh, so good. And if you are not dairy free, um, I would suggest making this up and then when you serve it, put a nice dollop of sour cream on it so that you can mix it in and it will add a little bit of creaminess, but you are not um, freezing a dairy product. We are going to be doing some of that today, but I know for some people they would prefer not to, so this is a great option 
for a frozen creamy um, soup. All right, so I put the white chili into a separate dish to cool down. You definitely want everything to get completely cool before you put it into the freezer containers. I washed up my pot and we're gonna get started on the next soup that we'll be prepping. This is a chicken broccoli cheddar soup and I'm gonna be using frozen broccoli. So I'm actually gonna get the broccoli out and chop it up a little bit smaller. It's super simple to chop up broccoli whenever it is frozen. While we're working on chopping up the broccoli, I'm just going to get my pot on a medium heat. We're gonna put about five tablespoons or so of butter in the bottom of the pot to start melting and then we're going to create sort of a flour mixture in the bottom of the pot. I'm going to be using a flour alternative for this because we do have some gluten sensitivities in the house and I'm actually the one that's gonna probably be eating this soup the most and personally I don't eat a whole lot of gluten so I'm gonna tell you about that in just a second. So we're gonna let the butter melt while we chop up the broccoli. The butter has pretty well melted and I'm going to put in a whole onion chopped small. And we're just gonna let this kind of simmer in here for just a little bit until the onion is somewhat transparent. This is about two pounds of broccoli chopped up into more manageable bite-sized pieces for soup. We've got our uh, onion in here getting a bit transparent. We're gonna add one cup of water to this and as you see I have a whisk and then this here is a half cup of oat fiber and oat fiber is a gluten-free um, kind of flour alternative and it does really well at helping to thicken things as well but if you wanted to just use regular flour in place of this you totally can it is pretty well um, interchangeable in this recipe I'm gonna let this simmer for a little bit until the onions are cooked just a bit more before adding more ingredients. All right, I promise we're not going to use the blender for every recipe in today's video, but we are gonna use it again. Before we do that though, I'm going to go ahead. I did put one cup of chicken broth in here. We're gonna need a total of five cups. So here we've got about four more cups added to the onion mixture. And to that, we're going to put the broccoli in. We just wanna cook the broccoli up until it's a little bit tender and ready to be eaten in the soup. So we don't want it too crunchy, and obviously it's a little icy right now from being frozen. So we're just gonna let that cook up. Now, to make our cheesy mixture, because obviously this is a cheddar broccoli chicken soup, <laughs> we are going to, in the blender, combine three cups of cheddar cheese. And I did shred this myself. It always melts better. There isn't any coatings or any powders added to it. And this is the cheddar cheese that I've been getting from Costco that you all have seen. To that, we are also going to add two cups of water. We're gonna add a cup of cottage cheese. And all of these things are gonna help this be really thick. You know, whenever you get a good cheddar broccoli soup and it's got a good thick, cheesy mixture or texture, I mean, um, we're trying to achieve that by these combinations if they seem a little funny. We have a cup of heavy cream. And to this, we're also gonna add two cloves of garlic. I could mince this and add it to the soup, but since I'm already blending all of this together, I might as well throw it in there. I also have a small handful of fresh parsley from my little patio garden, which is going to add another fantastic flavor. We're going to add some exanthin gum. Again, you could add a little sprinkle extra of flour. This is just another gluten-free thickener. We're gonna add a half teaspoon. Put that right in there. Now you can just kind of season it how you would like it. I'm just gonna add in some extra garlic powder. 
and some nutritional yeast. If you don't know what that is, it's high in vitamins and it's super great to add to different things. Plus it's actually yellow, so it's gonna help amp up the yellow color. I'm just gonna add a few teaspoons of that and you can decide how much you wanna add. I enjoy the flavor. It has a kind of a cheesy flavor. A lot of people that eat vegan actually use it as a cheesy alternative on popcorn and other things like that. And then we are going to also put some black pepper in this. I think I'm out here. I think I was out with that thing the last video. <laughs> I need to get that refilled. I've been kind of cheating and pulling from my shakers here. All right, and then we are going to blend this all together until it's a smooth, cheesy type consistency. Okay, so I had to get out my ugly <laughs> Dutch oven. It's a little bit bigger than the other one because we're running out of space in this soup. And I moved it to the back burner. We're gonna add these things in, then we'll chat about freezing cream, soups with cream or dairy products in them. So I'm going to add the creamy mixture. This is not to boiling. It's not boiling, it's dropped in temperature just a little bit, it is pretty hot but it's not boiling. And that's important because boiling can cause dairy to curdle, which is not the goal with this soup. So I'm just gonna add in this creamy mixture. Need to grab a spoon to get it all out of there. Give me just one second. So we wanna get all the good stuff out of the blender, which can be a bit of a challenge whenever you've got <laughs> creamy, thick, cheesy, sauce and obviously a lot of people would make this with like Velveeta or something like that I don't usually buy that in my kitchen um, so finding a good alternative mixture like this is really nice I'm actually gonna take a little bit of the hot broth and put it in the bottom of here to help get some of the cheesy stuff <laughs> out of the bottom that's around the blender blades. There we go. I'd say that's about as good as it's gonna get. Okay, so we have this we're just stirring in. Now I have this set to low back here. One of the reasons is because we do have that garlic in the sauce, the cheesy sauce. So we wanna make sure that that does get cooked. And I took three of the chicken breasts that I had grilled up earlier. We're gonna add this in as well just to give Nice protein and obviously some more flavor with that smoky flavor from the chicken breast. I did cut it up fairly small, very small diced pieces just because um, the broccoli is cut small. We just want it all to be pretty similar in size. So we're just gonna let this on low while we start into the next recipe. Back here we have the cheddar soup and it is just kind of simmering away letting it slowly, slowly cook that garlic up that was blended in there and combine all of the flavors. And then here is my pot that's been cleaned. I'm gonna add a pound of ground turkey to this and just let it start to fry on the bottom of the pan. And for everyone who gets after me for thinking that I never season my meat, <laughs> I just don't always show it on camera. So I'm putting some salt and a little bit of black pepper across this turkey. The turkey is browned in here. So I'm gonna add in the bell pepper and the onion. I just love the colors we have here. Love food that's colorful. I know I said that earlier about the white chili, but 
I just think it's so fun to eat things that look pretty. <laughs> so I'm just going to let these soften up with the turkey and then we'll add some more ingredients in. But I'm gonna put the lid on this so that it can kind of steam the bell pepper and onion. We are looking a little bit like a deconstructed egg roll here, but this smells absolutely incredible. I am so, so, so excited to eat this. Even my daughters keep commenting, Mom, what smells so good? So I know that this is gonna be a big winner for us. All right, now we're gonna make a total classic. I'm going to get my pot started here. We've got Soups cooling all over. We want them to totally cool. And fortunately, we can make soups pretty quickly that this can all be done in an afternoon. So we're going to need some carrots. Now these carrots, I am not going to peel. Some people like to peel their carrots. I do peel them for different dishes. But because these are gonna be cut up pretty small, I might as well keep the nutrients that the outside of the carrot holds. Um, and nobody's gonna know the difference. So we're going to make chicken rice soup. I love this soup from Panera. It's one of my favorites. It's such a great comfort food for me, for sure. And I'm a big rice person. I love anything with rice in it. And since I did pre-make my rice and chicken, before we started, this one's going to be a literal throw together. Gonna to be so, so simple. And I already chopped up my chicken breast and there was about three or four left um, in what I made. And I also cut up a purple onion cause I'm out of my other onions, but I happen to have a few purple onions left and I'm going to use that up in this recipe as well. When it comes to making soups, just making sure that everything will fit well on a spoon when you think of what size to cut things at. That's what I always think of, will it fit on a spoon? I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in this video or not, but of course, as usual, all of the recipes will be either linked or typed out in the description box below. So while I finish chopping the carrots, I'm going to put my onion that's diced fairly small into the bottom of my pot back here. We're gonna get that frying along with my pre-chopped celery out of the freezer. Put that in there and we'll get everything kind of stir frying in the bottom of the pan. I think that soups turn out the best if you can kind of saute your veggies in the bottom of the pan. You keep all the flavor, you don't lose any flavor, and you're able to create a great base for your soup. carrots are done so I'm going to go ahead and just transfer them in here with the rest of the vegetables and I will just fry these until the carrots start to get a little bit tender so I'm gonna put the lid on it so that the steam is on my side and helps to soften up these carrots excuse my dirty oven mitt <laughs> I need to put it in the laundry but we have soft carrots. Everything's looking fantastic in here. All right, so I kind of explained this with some cornstarch, and that is it's better to mix your thickener before you put it into heat. And this is exanthin gum. It's a great um, thickener that is gluten-free, and it's just gonna help give the soup a bit more good mouthfeel. Is that the right word? I think that's the good way, best way to say it. So we're just gonna shake this up in here, kind of get it to dissolve a bit. Um, I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute. While we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and put this 
four cups of, we want six cups in total, but four cups of chicken broth in here. We are going to put our chicken breast. Told you this is a really easy dump and go. We've got our rice and I am going to add in some fresh parsley. It calls for dried parsley, but I have lots of extra right now out on my patio garden and why not, right? Why not get a full punch of flavor from fresh herbs while they're in season? And I always like using scissors. I use scissors for so many things. If you guys have watched for a while, you probably already know that. <laughs> I use it, kitchen scissors to cut up meat. I use it to cut up things for my kids. Um, anything and everything you can think of. Except for cutting apart ice pops. <laughs> If you guys know, you know, you know, you know from last week's video. <laughs> okay, we're gonna add in the broth with the thickener in it and I'm seeing I've got a big lump here that somehow clumped up. So just grabbed that to make sure that it's not all lumped up in my soup. <laughs> Our last ingredient besides some salt and pepper is a teaspoon and a half of thyme. And then we are gonna just stir everything together. Gonna grab some salt. Gonna put a teaspoon of salt in here. Oops. I love black pepper. I grew up with a mom that put it in almost everything and it just is such a yummy flavor. Okay, we are going to combine all the things, oh yum. The grilled chicken in this I feel like is just going to elevate this entire soup. So we're gonna let this simmer and I am going to get out containers and show you all what we're gonna be freezing this in. All right, so these are the freezer containers I was talking about. We're gonna start out with our first soup, which was the white chicken chili. I don't know if we'll be able to fill all of these or not. My hopes are that we will. Um, I have, there's a few more back there. I think I have 50 in total because this would have been a 50 pack, um, a new pack. So we'll see what we can fill. These hold about two cups, which to me is a great serving size um for soups and especially a soup like this one this one's a very 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 hearty soup now in my count of how many servings i'm getting out of all of this we have eaten some today while i was cooking things so i'm sure it's not going to be the exact number of containers i have here now we've got the broccoli cheddar chicken soup and I'm gonna hold this up here. I am washing out my measuring cup that I'm scooping this with in between soups so we don't get things too mixed up. This was one the girls also ate out of today and even asked for some seconds. They really liked this. My husband had some of this for lunch as well. All right, now we've got the stuffed pepper soup. I'm gonna fill these with. The girls just ran through here <laughs> on their way upstairs from the creek. It is a toasty day today. I guess I didn't really mention that earlier, but it's definitely in the 90s today. So a great day to be in the kitchen and stay cool in the AC. So this is the Asian inspired, um, I don't know, I wanna call this more like a stew. It's a little thicker than a soup. These are all pretty hearty soups, I would say. All right, so I transferred the uh, chicken and rice soup 
into a nine by 13 so it got out of the cast iron, which was hot and keeping it hot. And I've just been kind of stirring it, cooling it down. So while it's still cooling down, I'm going to put lids on all of these here and start to label them. So you might be wondering how and where I'm gonna store these. These are actually gonna go in our deep, one of our deep freezers, and I'm just going to stack them um, in the deep freezer. That's one thing that's really great about these containers is that they do stack very nicely and stay pretty sturdy in the deep freezer along the wall. I hope that today's video really inspired you and I hope that you got some good ideas on meals that you can prep for your family. I'm going to put probably the total amount of meals in the description or maybe I'll put it in a pinned comment in the comments, which leads me to please chat with me in the comments. I love hearing from you all. I love hearing the things that you're working on or ways that you um, enjoy using my channel to get ideas for food that you can cook for yourself. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and I will see you all in the comments.